Hey guys, welcome back. I am very glad that you're here. I ordered a couple things from Jackson's Art Supply and I thought I would film a video of the unboxing for you. I do also want to apologize about the lighting in this video. I filmed it at nighttime because I simply couldn't wait to open the box anymore. So you might see some weird shadows and things like that throughout the video. And while we're at it, I recorded this with audio, but none of it went through. So I am re-recording on top of it. So you might notice some hand gestures that don't necessarily go along with what I'm saying. One of the many reasons that I love Jackson's art is the fact that they are environmentally conscious. They are basically offsetting their carbon footprint by reusing some of the packaging materials that are used um, from their manufacturers to ship the items to them, which is super and definitely makes me want to shop there versus other art supply stores. Right now I'm just taking everything out of the box and then I will go through each item individually once I get that box out of the way. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you guys from my order are these brochures. These were relatively inexpensive on Jackson's. I believe they were all under $5, except for the Holbein one. That one might be a little more expensive because that is hand painted. I really like having these in the studio. I do have one or two other ones, and I like being able to look at them as references as I'm working in the studio. They are all a little bit different, so I'll go through them each individually. I believe the ones I have here are from Snellier, Holbein, Daniel Smith, Old Holland, and Schmincke. While non-voiceover me is rambling on about something, I will take the opportunity to ask you to please subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy the content. It helps the channel an awful lot. I also have affiliate links down below. As always, they're no cost to you, but it does help the channel quite a bit. Each time a link is used to purchase something, I get a small commission of that, and then I turn around and buy things like this from Jackson's to show you. The first one that we are delving into today is from Snellier. When you open the brochure up, it does have a few pieces about how the watercolors are made and how they differ a little bit from other watercolors. Then you can go ahead and get into their printed color chart. I myself will probably cut those two pages out, um, paste them together, and put them up as a reference. I'll definitely keep that other information and store it in a binder somewhere in my studio. So the next one I will just briefly show you guys is from Old Holland. This one is set up just a little bit differently. They do have all of the colors on the front with their names given by the company, but they do also include all the necessary pigment information on the back of the pamphlet. Next up we have the one by Schmincke. This one is set up a little bit differently. It's more like a catalog than the other ones. This first page here shows some of their newer colors. So when you look into these, you get all the pigment information you could ever want. And then off to the right hand side, they also have a very nice description of the color as well. So kind of just flipping through here so you guys can get an idea of the setup of this. It is quite nice. I do have a few Schmincke paints and then I also have uh, one of their sets. So nice to be able to look up pigment information and find everything that I would need about the color. In the back of this one, they also have some really cool color information and then they also have most of their products displayed um, in the back here so you can have quick reference numbers to order sets and those types of things. All right, and on to the Holbein watercolor swatch chart. This one is hand painted. I believe it was around $12 US. The rest of them were very, very inexpensive comparatively. I'm sure they charge a little bit more just because they're, oh, there's a little bit more work that goes into making these. It is really nice to have them painted out. Sometimes when you have the, the printer ink, it's not quite the same. I mean, there's only so much a digital printer can do to replicate colors. And so it's nice to see it in its full form.
Okay, so when I open it up, it looks like it was packaged really nicely. They have a piece of parchment paper between the, the sheets so the colors don't rub off on one another. From what I can tell, they are little individual sheets that were swatched on, or I'm sure it was a larger swatch and then cut into individual sheets, um, but they are basically pasted in there for you. And when I opened this one, I was just a little bit confused. I know that you guys probably can't see. It's very, very tiny in the lower right-hand corner of this. Um, but it does kind of have a disclaimer at the bottom that printer color may vary. Um, so I am just a little bit curious. Um, I'm assuming these aren't printer made just because I know it said hand swatched on Jackson's. Um, but I'm wondering if I peeled up one of these swatches, if there would be um, like a printer paper underneath it or a, a printed swatch underneath. Um, maybe sometime I'll have to do that and let you guys know what I found. And I did just want to point out here, it does look like they have all of their pigment information here. They have it both in English and then they have it in Japanese as well. Since it's a Japanese made watercolor, that makes a lot of sense. Their numbering system is a little bit different when you're looking at the swatches on the, on the chart individually, but they do have their, their true pigment information on the inside of the pamphlet. Next up is a brochure, or I guess rather a catalog from Jackson's. Um, this was really cool. I kind of found it by happenstance on Jackson's. I don't think it was very expensive, but as far as I could tell online, it basically had an overview of what Jackson's had um, in terms of watercolor supplies. So kind of fit together and, and put together by someone. It's actually a lot cooler than I thought it would be just because it has all of the brands uh, and most of the pigment information and uh, colors available and those types of things. They also have sets that they sell from that particular brand, which I imagine would be super helpful if you were looking for a watercolor set and wanted to know um, pigment information on each of the colors you were receiving. I was definitely wowed by this catalog. To be honest, I kind of had a hard time finishing the rest of the video because I wanted to just keep looking through this. I know now that they do have it online at their website. I did just order it kind of on a whim since I was ordering some other pamphlets, but it was definitely a worthwhile purchase. Now, aside from just watercolors, they do have a lot of other watercolor supplies listed towards the back. I will say too that they have a lot of other forms of watercolor. So there are watercolor sticks, watercolor pencils, watercolor markers. They have all their gouache in here as well. So it's definitely more than just watercolors. They have different items like this that aren't watercolor that you can place with your paintings to, to add something into your piece or make it a multimedia piece, I suppose. They do have a lot of drawing equipment, uh, lots of pens, pencils, every single kind of watercolor supply. Um, they also have these art graph, I think they're like char water soluble charcoals. So those are really interesting. I did see those last time on Jackson's and looking at them here makes me want to, to maybe get them next time I place an order. They also have a nice cataloging of all of their papers that they do sell. There are some more student grade papers and then 100% cotton papers obviously in here. They give you a little bit of an idea of the texture of the paper. It's not quite like having a sample in your hands or, or the piece of paper there. I would highly recommend Jackson's paper samples if you are a new watercolorist and want to experiment with a few types of papers. They do have really inexpensive little packs and I actually ordered some so I'll show you kind of what they look like or what you get when you order those. Next up we have some brushes. I really like the way that they kind of categorize them. So you'll notice on the sides in those circles, they have exceptional, excellent, good. Um, and so they rank them. And I was just pointing out to that picture. That would also look really cool in a studio if you framed it. They have a lot of other things for your art studio too. So tapes, um, easels, ceramic palettes, they have a whole page full of palettes, which is awesome. And then they actually have an order sheet on the back for you in case you wanted to order via mail. 
I would say that the majority of us probably don't do that anymore, but always nice to have the option. Oh, and I just realized that I forgot a pamphlet here. I did order another Daniel Smith watercolor pamphlet. I do have one of these somewhere in my studio, but I don't know where it is. So it's nice to have an extra one here. I'll cut that piece off at the end and then I'll hang that up in my studio as well. All right, and so in this cute little box here, we have a few Holbein paints. I did have a set of Holbein tubes a while back, but one of my friends wanted to try Holbein, and so they have been rehomed to her. So these are the only Holbein tubes in my possession as of right now. This is the tube that caused my whole order. I wanted to try Holbein's Shadow Green. I had seen another artist use it here on YouTube and I apologize, I don't remember which artist was using it, um, but I thought it was a really beautiful color and so I wanted to try it out as well. I do struggle with greens a little bit. I do a few landscape things and it's always tough to find that right green or to mix the right green and so I'm hoping that will help on my journey with that. Next up here we have a few brushes. I don't believe any of these were crazy expensive. The first one I picked up is a Jackson's mop brush. This I thought was a little bit interesting. It reminded me a lot of my Da Vinci Casaneo, so I wanted to purchase it just to see how it would compare with that. They look like they're made of similar materials, but I wanted to try for myself since they are at such different price points. This is a small Jackson's brush. It's a square two, I believe. Um, so that one I got just for a few small details in some of my paintings. Sorry for my camera not focusing super well on some of these. The next one I got here is an eradicator brush from Billy Shoal. One creator that I follow pretty closely, Louise Damasi, uses these um, on her intricate details of paintings to kind of erase or decrease the amount of pigment that's sitting in a certain spot. So I'm excited to try that. I don't believe this one was very expensive either, around $5 US. This one is a goat hair brush. I've been looking for one of these for some time. Meant to hold and pick up a lot of water for larger washes. It can also be used to add texture to different paintings depending on how much water is saturating the brush hairs. And for such a large brush, this one was very inexpensive. I believe this was around $3 US. So like I said before, I really love ordering paper samples from Jackson's. They're really inexpensive. They're I think around 12 cents a sheet, 15 cents a sheet, um, obviously depending on what type of papers you're after. I got this pack of Saunders Waterford papers. They include a lot of variety in thickness and texture so that you can see what you like. I have a few from Canson here and then I have a few that are unmarked and I apologize, I cannot remember which ones those are, but I'm sure I will be showing you a paper comparison here in the near future. Uh, one of those is rough and one of those is smooth, I'm assuming of this same brand. So I think overall there are eight sheets of watercolor paper in here. Um, so you can try it in that white space and then if you want to you can certainly cut out that specific piece from the paper and then use that for your paper for your artwork if you're doing small, small things. The nice thing about these here is that the company doesn't put their brand on there so you can use the entire sheet. I did also pick up this Stonehenge paper sample packet. It does not only include just watercolor paper, there are papers for pastels and I assume oil paintings and a lot of other types of media. Um, it has a really nice index. It's just really nice to have the paper in your hand when you're considering uh, what type of paper to use. So definitely tough online to decide which type of paper you want and so this gives you a little bit better of an idea if they're saying 640 GSM or exactly how thick that is or the different types of textures. So it's nice to feel them and then get acquainted with 
As you can see, they have a gray toned or tan toned paper back here, um, and then a few others. So this will be a nice little addition to my paper samples or my paper drawer, um, just so I can have a reference of what Stonehenge paper feels like. So I think that is everything for us. Thank you guys so much for your patience. I know that uh, the shadows probably got a little bit annoying and uh, the original audio not working wasn't helpful either, but I appreciate you sticking with me and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.